Sunday night, so let's not forget that. And then let's be in much prayer for Brother Curtis Lynn. He'll be coming uh, on March the 10th. All right, March the 10th, Brother Curtis will be here with us. Hopefully you can come and be, and, and be with him. And then, of course, right after the holidays, we'll start picking up a few offerings here and there to try to get, uh, try to get some finances for that. Uh, but pray much for that. And if you haven't signed up on the, on the cleanup list, make sure you sign up the cleanup list uh, for the church, okay? Because we do need to get that taken care of. Uh, so that uh, so that the cleanup list will be full. We got about three months on, on the cleanup list. So either uh, you sign up or Brother Joseph has to do it. I mean, it's just the way it's going to go because I got a few other things to do. Uh, do pray though. I got a few things I, I need to finish up. Uh, we're trying to get everything done with the well and all that. So do pray for that. Hopefully we can get all that taken care of. All right. Hopefully you guys will have a good Christmas. Uh, you know. If you're going, uh, especially my time is going back to Delano, so drive safely. You know, it's a long, it's a long ways, and a lot of crazy people sometimes out there. Amen. All right, uh, go to uh, where do I want you to go? Actually, go to John chapter 10. I'll get there with you in a few minutes. Just kind of wait for me there. <clears throat> John chapter 10. All right. And uh, okay, let me turn my. All right, John chapter 10. And while we're doing this, brother, uh, I'll turn real quick. Turn real quick. Give those to Cynthia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I'm never going to text again say be at 10 o'clock on time. Because it gets worse, eh? amen. <laughs> All right, if people don't show up on time, it gets worse. All right, I want you to notice in, uh, in John chapter 10, I'm going to give you some thoughts there because I want to give you this, this one thought. At uh, Christmas, we celebrate what? The birth of Christ. Amen. Uh, usually when you celebrate someone's birth, you give them something. Amen? Help me out. Amen. Okay. Amen. You, you, don't, you don't say, uh, for example, you, I'm gonna, if I went to your birthday party, let's say Brother Joseph, we'll pick on him for a little bit this morning. Brother Joseph's having a birthday party. I go over there and I say, where's my gift? But in my birthday, it's the Lord's birthday. Amen. Amen. Now, we do give and all that. I understand all that. Now, we don't really know when Jesus was born. That They just set up a date when they were going to celebrate his birthday, and that's what we try to do. But he was born. We, we, we all have to agree on that. He Amen. was born. When? I have no idea, but he was born. Now, I want you to notice here in verse 17, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from there. Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. This is a commandment I received of my father. Now, what you notice a statement he makes. Nobody's taking my life. I'm going to lay it down of myself. I'm giving myself for you guys. But nobody's taking my life. Sometimes we say, well... The Roman soldiers killed him, or the, the Rome had him crucified, or the Jews had him crucified. The truth is, Jesus said, you can't take my life, I'm giving it. Amen. 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 You remember when he was with Pilate, he says to Pilate, you can't receive anything except it's given to you from above. So regardless of what people say or think, Jesus gave himself for us. Amen. When he was on the cross... Uh, the, 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 the beating they gave him didn't take his life. The whipping didn't take his life. You know what took his life? Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He gave it up. Amen. And then the Bible says, and having said these words, he gave up the ghost. Amen. So nobody, uh, matter of fact, he told, he told Pilate at one time, he said, listen, if my father wanted, he could send some angels down here to take care of this mess. Amen. So the truth is, Jesus came here because he loved us to give his life for us. Amen. Amen. Right? And then, of course, the Bible says in John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. So God loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Amen. Now, you've heard me teach on this plenty. And remember this, love is the emotion that causes an effect. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
You love somebody, you take them flowers. Why don't you take them flowers? Because you love them. You love somebody, you buy them candy. Why? Because you love them. You buy them someone, you ask them to marry you. Why? Because you love them. It creates an effect. For God so loved, he loved us so much that the effect was that he sent his son. Amen. So God gave us his son. Jesus gave his life. Now I'm going to say this to you. What can we give Jesus? What can you give Jesus today? If Jesus was to say to you, what can you give me today? What would you say? Well, Lord, I've been thinking about it. I think I'll give you this. See, the Lord don't need your money. Amen? Amen. Well, the reason we tithe and he wants us to tithe to keep the church moving here on earth. But up in heaven, he don't need no money. The streets are of gold. He doesn't need my money up there. Amen? We tithe to keep the church going. Now, well, let me give you another thought. Okay, you say, well, he, maybe I could give him some money. Maybe I can give him, uh, I can give him a, 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 maybe a, a, some kind of gift for the church or whatever. God doesn't need that. I'm going to give you some things that I believe God would like to have from us. One of them, I want you to go, if you would, to Psalms 5. Psalms 5. Let's go there real quickly. One of the things I think that we need to start doing is learning how to trust God. Amen? So what am I going to give God? First of all, it will be my trust. I want to give the Lord my trust. And that's, so I want you to consider that, what I'm saying this morning. Because you want to say to yourself, I want to trust the Lord. I want to make sure that he knows that I trust him. Amen. Now watch what it says here in chapter uh, 5. Wait a minute, I, I didn't say 50, I said 5, didn't I? Yeah. Right. Oh, you're going to have to wait for me because I went to 50. I'm really moving along this morning. <clears throat> All right, in chapter 5, look at verse 11. Verse 11 says this, And let, the, and let all those that put their trust in, uh, in thee rejoice, and let them ever shout for joy, because uh, thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. But watch what he says. Let all those that trust in the Lord do what? Rejoice and, have joy, and shout for joy. In other words, if I'm trusting God, I need to learn to shout for joy. Now, I gave you the definition the other day, uh, because uh, actually me and Aaron were talking about this one time. Uh, Brother Curtis was preaching for us one time, and he used an illustration about, in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God concerning you. Remember that? It's in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, all right? He says, uh, in everything, give thanks. And Brother Curtis said, you got to give thanks in everything. Well, but you really can't. Amen? Amen? I want you to think you can't. When you make that statement, you're saying to people, when you're going through a difficult time, give thanks to God for it. When you're going through, somebody uh, somebody passes away, like we've had, uh, give thanks for it. You can't. How are you going to do that? Your loved one's in the hospital, they're dying. Oh, thank you that they're dying. Can you do that? No. What's he saying, though? He's saying in the middle of everything, Learn to give thanks. You can give thanks for their life. You can give thanks for the time God let, let you have them. You can, give, you can give thanks in those areas, but you can't thank God when they're in the middle of, a, of sickness and so on. So now I'm trying to say to you, learn to, learn to trust God and be thankful to the Lord. I'll give you some things where we're going to trust the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct thy path. Now I want God to guide my life, and probably so do you. Well, how am I going to do that? I'm going to trust the Lord. In all of my ways, I'm going to trust God. If I'm going to, if I decide, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, now I'm too old to take another church. I'll be honest with you. God would have to pick me up and drop me in, in, with a parachute somewhere because there's no way I'm going to do it on my own. But let's assume that God did move on me uh, enough that I knew God wants me to move somewhere else. And I said, well, God wants me to go pastor over here. I'm going to go. Now, people would say, well, man, don't do that. And it's hard. And I would say, yeah, but I want to trust the Lord because there's no doubt in my mind that he wants me there. Let me give you an illustration. And I wouldn't do this. And I'm, I'm just letting you know that I wouldn't do this. But this old preacher one time met with another preacher. And he said, well, God wants me to go to Africa. He said, uh, you're too old to go to Africa. No, God wants me to go to Africa. He told me already. I know it in my heart. He put, he put it in my heart and my soul. He wants me to go to Africa. So he gets himself ready and 
and takes off. He says, by the way, before you leave, you do realize that the last two missionaries that went there, they killed them. The Africans killed them. He said, I know it, but God told me to go. Two years later, he hears from them. He said, it scared me to death because I received a letter that said, I want you to come and preach for me in Africa. He said, I don't want to go to Africa. I don't want to get killed out there in Africa. Here's what he found out. He goes, because right now we have 500 members in our church, and I want you to come preach to them. You know what was in that? God was in it. Amen? Amen. Now, I can, a lot of times you say, boy, that sounds like a good idea. I'll do this, and I'll do it. Be careful, because i got a lot of good ideas. <laughs> but I don't mean God's in it. i got to, oh, man, if I did this, God said, no, God's not, no. Don't believe everything that just because, or in other words, don't jump every time you think God talked to you. Make absolutely sure, because it's a battle sometimes. Amen? Amen. Now, let me say, first of all, then let me remind you, of course, of this. Remember that we're to trust the Lord. Trust Him in our salvation. Trust Him that you got saved. Trust him and say, I know I'm saved because the Lord said I could be saved by trusting him. Trust him in that. Don't go, well, maybe. Well, I hope so. No, God saved you. Amen. And you have to trust him in that. Amen. Amen. I'm not saved because how good I am. I'm saved because the Lord saved me. That's right. If it was up to me, I wouldn't make it probably. Amen. I have to trust the Lord. Uh, trust him in salvation. Trust him in situation that you're going to come to. Trust him in supplying your needs. Again, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now notice the Bible doesn't say, my God shall supply all of your wants. No, he said, God's going to supply your needs. Amen. Amen. Whatever I need, God will take care of it. One way or another, uh, God seems to always supply our needs. Trust him in the time of sorrow. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you in your time of sorrow. Trust the Lord. Take all your cares. And that word, casting all your cares, is like when you take off your coat and you put it over someone else. That's exactly what it means. To put to, to cover the Lord with your cares. Put them on him and say, Lord, you take care of this. So casting all your cares upon him in sorrows. We gotta trust him for strength when we just figure we can't go no more. Amen. When you say I give up, and I'm talking about spiritually. When you say, you know what, I give up. I'm just going to give up. There's nothing I can do. You say, boy, I go through that a lot. Everybody goes through that a lot. Mm -hmm. You're not the only one. Amen? Amen. I mean, I pass through a church, and sometimes I just want to say, you know what, forget it. I'm done. I don't want to do anything anymore. Uh, last week, I had so many things going at one time. I can, you, yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I, I got that little, I didn't even have a Sunday school lesson. And it's about, what, 10, 15 minutes before church. And I don't have a Sunday school lesson. And you know what I had to do real quick? I got to say, I sat down, I heard a little statement, I sat down, and I began to outline that statement, put some scripture out there, and hope God would let me see it and get through that. Uh, now sometimes you have to do it that way. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me go for the next thing. So we're going to have to trust Him uh, to strengthen us when you want to give up. Uh, let the Lord uh, strengthen you. A lot of times when I want to give up, or when I feel like discouraged, when I feel like forget everything, I'll come into my office and I'll sit there, and I'll think about people. For example, uh, my, most of you know my sister passed away, but I can remember one time she was in the hospital. And I called her. I, don't, I can't remember what she was in there for, but I called her. And I said, uh, how are you doing? She goes, I'm doing fine, Patrick. And I told everybody, I know I'm fine because my brother's paying for me. Somebody needs you. Now, listen carefully. Somebody needs you. Mm -hmm. When my sister Ramona was in the hospital, here the other, here's a few months back, I guess. Uh, Elaine called me, her daughter said, my mom says she's not worried because she knows you're going to come up and see her. I couldn't go. I couldn't go. I said, Elaine, tell her I'm, I'm going to have to go later, but tell her that I am praying for her. She goes, oh, she already knows that. She told me. <coughs> Somebody is depending on you. Amen. When you give up, you're going to let them down. That's Amen. right. Amen? Amen? Somebody's depending on you. Somebody's depending on you to make it. Somebody's depending on you to get through this thing. And if you don't get through this thing, then uh, we're going we're gonna to end up uh, failing the Lord. So first of all, you've got to get strong in the Lord and let the Lord give you strength. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be strong in the Lord. Not in, in you or your might, but in his might. Amen. In his might. 
Now I'll tell you this little quick story. Some of you probably heard it, heard me tell it before. I know the church members have it one time or another. But I can remember one time, my dad was in the, my dad was lost. It was back in the nineties. My dad was lost. They didn't know what happened to him, and that was a worry for me. I was having trouble with them. My, my older boys, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Now, they weren't in sin or anything like that, but some other situation came up, and, and they got rough. I got to church, and everybody decided they wanted to divorce each other. I'm going, you got to be kidding me. If you don't think that will depress you and get the best of you, you're crazy. Amen. Amen. And one person came to me and said, Pastor, I was talking to so and so, we decided we're not going to talk about you anymore. <laughs> Doesn't that encourage you? And that's in the middle of that. So I get up and I go door knocking. See, she used to share, I wasn't even going to tell me it was you, but you left. Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. no, so I'm out there door knocking, and uh, all of a sudden, something hit me so hard, it was unbelievable. While I'm door knocking, I, I knocked on the door, a lady answered, I talked to her for a few minutes, I started going down the stairs, and I just began to cry. And I sat down at the bottom of the stairs, and I'm sitting there crying by myself, just crying. And then I thought to myself, somebody's going to come out here and see the preacher sitting here crying, what is wrong with you, get up. But I just didn't want to get up. I was done. I was done. And it was like if I was in the pit in darkness and I couldn't see anything else but darkness. And you want to cry. Mm -hmm. And I did. But after a little while, I said, Lord, I'm going to have to get up out of here. Lord, you're going to have to help me because people are going to see me here crying. That's not, that not going to look good. And all of a sudden, I got, it just seemed like the Lord began to speak to my heart a little bit. I don't mean in a real voice. But I could feel the Lord speaking to my heart. I got up. I went to the car, cleaned my eyes a little bit, then went back to the door knocking and kept on going. What I'm saying to you is this, sometimes you're going to have to say, Lord, I can't do this. He said, be strong in what? The Lord. Amen? Not in yourself, be strong in the Lord. Let God be your strength. Let God give you the strength that you, that you need to have. And so, be strong when it comes to, to, uh, to, your, to your strength. Uh, let the Lord give you the strength. And then, in our service, Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, I labored more than they all, but not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Why did Paul labor the way he did? He said, it wasn't me, it was God giving me the ability to labor. So in service. Boy, you want to be a good servant. Let God be the one that gives you the strength to be the best servant you can be. Amen? Don't say to yourself, well, I, I, you know, I'll take care of it. No, I'll do it. I'll do it if I have to. No, wait on the Lord and let him give you the strength that you need. I mean, as I get older, I realize I really need the Lord. Mm -hmm. I used to think, man, I just gave you a sermon. I just, but it's not that way anymore. I'm getting older. And as I get older, I have to study more and I forget things. Anybody old enough to start forgetting? <laughs> Brother Mike goes, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. That's probably what happened to everybody today. Huh? They, they forgot. <laughs> all right, now let's continue here real quick. So remember, first of all, keep in mind, and I want you to think about this, that you're going to have to give, and you're going to have to, your service, whatever you're going to do for the Lord, if you're going to depend on yourself, forget about it. You're going to have to depend on the Lord. Amen. God will give you the strength to get the job done, and God will give you the wisdom to do the job. God is not going to give you something to do and then tell you, I'm not going to help you. No, if God gives you a job, he's going to be there for you. All right, so now let's move to the next thing. Not only give him your trust, also let's give him our time. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. What about our time? We ought to be giving God our time, amen? Uh, too much, really. We spend too much time on us. Too much time on our kids. Too much time on our work when we should be giving God our time. We're going to, uh, we're going to drop dead one of these days. I know you don't believe me. But one of these days, we're going to die. And we're going to have to answer to God. Now watch what it says here in Ephesians chapter 5. If you're there, wait for me as usual. <clears throat> Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly. Okay, I got it. I was hoping, hoping I could say that word. All right? 
Uh, that, that means, simply means to be, uh, to consider. Let me put on my glasses and I'll tell you what that word means, because I wrote it down, since most of you probably already know what it means. And you know what's terrible when you put on, <clears throat> when you put on your glasses and you can't even see with your glasses on? Uh, productively, all right? In other words, uh, make sure that you walk <clears throat> making, making the right use of your time, being productive. Not as fools, but as wise. Be wise in your life. Use your time wisely. Use your time wisely. Now, but, and by the way, why, why is that important? Well, because uh, time goes by fast. Notice verse 16, redeeming the time because the days, because the days are evil. All right? Wherefore, he said, be not unwise, excuse me, but understanding what the, will of, <clears throat> what the will of the Lord is. Now, he said, don't be unwise, but understand the will of the Lord. Now, I want to share something with you. You know how we find the will of the Lord or how, many, how people sometimes say, this is what God wants in my life? Here's how they do that. I heard a preacher went home one day, and this real uh, uh, church that was real big, a lot of money and so on, had called him to be the pastor. He was pastoring a small church. They called him to be a pastor, so he went home and he said to his wife, Honey, start packing while I ask God what he wants me to do. Amen. Start packing while I ask God, see if he wants us to go. Well, I think he made up his mind before he asked God. Mm -hmm. Amen. A lot of us now say, God opened the door. God opened the door. You can forget about God opening the door and wait for the will of God. Amen. Wait for God, for God, for what God wants in your life. A lot of times uh, I could have said, oh, God opened this door. Oh, God opened that door. God opened it. But God didn't open the door. And I was glad that I didn't make the decision that I thought I should make. So redeem the time. Use it properly, all right? Uh, make sure that you use it wisely. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And we do live in an evil time. So we've got to be wise in how we do things. Amen. We've got to be wise in how we raise our kids. We've got to be wise in how we teach our kids. We've got to be wise in how we talk to our kids. I mean, in every area, you've got to be wise. You gotta be wise with your family, with your home, with your wife. You gotta use wisdom in all those situations, amen? Because if you don't, you're gonna end up in a mess in life. Use wisdom. Ask the Lord uh, to give you to uh, ask the Lord to give you wisdom and some understanding, all right? Because it is, uh, we do live in a time when it's hard. Now make sure that whatever you do, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, uh, give him your time. Whatever you do, make sure that what you do glorifies God. Amen. Now, let me give you some illustrations of what I'm talking about. Uh, we do want to, as much as we can, we want to glorify the Lord. All right? So we want to be faithful. Why? Because it glorifies God. Amen? Now, uh, for example, uh, and I know I know we have sick ones today. And I kept, my phone kept going off. I thought, I'm not even going to look at it anymore. But the truth is, let's consider this. And let's consider this, that you say to yourself, uh, all right, uh, uh, you come to you don't you don't go to church uh, like you should. People are watching you. Redeem the time. Do it right. I want I want. Uh, don't you want your kids to go to heaven? Then teach them to do the right thing. Teach them how to serve God. All right. How do, what about prayer? Spend time in prayer. What about Bible study? Spend time reading your Bible. Amen. Amen. Spend time reading your Bible. Oh, but you don't understand. You don't have the amount of kids I have. You can still read your Bible. Do you know that Susan Wesley had about 150 kids? No, I'm kidding. She had a lot of kids, though. I can't remember how many, but she had a lot of kids. You know what she used to do? She trained her kids this way. She would go in the middle of the room, and she would grab a, a, a blanket and throw it, in, throw it over her head while she was kneeling by a chair. And all the kids knew when Mama has that on, Get a, be quiet and get away from her. She's talking to God. She's talking to God. No wonder she raised good children. No wonder her kids were great evangelists. Amen? Because mama told them, hey, I, I want to spend time with God. You leave me alone. How many of us would have done that? We would be putting our hair out, but that's about it. But how many of us would have said, wait a minute, kids. I don't have time for the grandkids. I don't have time for this. I don't have, I got to go pray. And your grandkids and your children and your wife and your husband are going to be better off if you learn to give God time. Amen. And spend time in prayer. They're all going to be better off. Uh, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to soul winning, give God time for soul winning. He said, well, but you know, Pastor, sometimes, listen, I don't care where I was at. When I was a truck driver or whatever, I always gave out a track somewhere. 
That guy might never come to this church. We're too far. But hopefully he'll get saved. And I told you how I got saved over a track, but I'm not going to go through it. But hopefully he'll get saved. Amen? Mm -hmm. Go to church somewhere. Sometime, someday you're going to see him again. And in eternity, he's going to say, I remember you gave me that track over there, and now I'm saved because of it. You don't know what's going to happen. So do the best you can uh, to give people tracks to, to be a soul winning, to go to church, to be faithful, to study your Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to pray, and to do, to do what's right, by the way. You see, we, we as Christians, if you're not careful, we become sarcastic. Because now we're saved. I don't drink, I don't cuss, and I don't chew, and I don't go with the girls who do. So now I'm better than you are. No, I'm not better than you are. The only reason we don't do that is because God saved you. Amen. Amen. That's it. You're not better than somebody else. You see that poor guy in the street and, and he's st standing there and you know he's hungry and you got enough money to buy him a taco, buy him one. Nothing wrong with that. Learn to do good. Amen? Give him a track if you want to, but learn to do good. Sometimes, for example, I, I parked at in and out one day. Uh, I think I was going to pick up Aaron or something. He was working for in and out So I went and I parked at in and out and by the way, I'm thankful for Sister Petra and uh, Patty. They're out there helping with, uh, with the Sunday school because uh, both our Sunday school people are gone. But uh, I remember I parked on the pickup errand, and, and uh, there's a guy, and he was looking around, and he's, you, you can tell he's homeless. But he's looking around, and, and he goes over to this trash can, and he, he gets this half hamburger, and starts going, and I thought, he's going to eat that. So I got out of the car and I said, hold it, hold it. I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat that. I said, no, don't eat that. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. Put, throw that away. He threw it away. I said, I'm going to go get you one. So I went and got him a hamburger and some fries and a soda and gave it to him. Do good for people. Mm -hmm. He's never going to pay me back. I'll never probably ever see him again. But do good because you know that's what God wants you to do. Amen? Amen. We were at uh, Old Sacramento. If you've never been there, you should go there. Beautiful place. We went there to tell us the story of Sacramento. It's just a beautiful place to go uh, just to look. So we get there and we finish eating and just as we did, I threw away my fries and this guy who's sitting there with a blanket on him, he gets up and he pack, picks up the fries I just threw away and he starts throwing some off and he's about to eat the fries. Veronica looked over him and she goes, Patrick, that guy's going to eat the fries. I said, oh. I went over and I said, no, no, don't eat that, don't eat that. Uh, I'll get you some. I'll, I'll get you a hamburger. So I got him a hamburger, fries. Now, I never buy people beer. I helped a guy here one time. He goes, can I get a beer? I said, no, I'm not going to support your habit, partner. I'll feed you, but I won't buy you no beer. Amen? That's why I don't give him money, because I know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, I, I'll feed you, but I'm not going to support your habit. But anyway, I bought, I bought him stuff. People, listen, do good once in a while. Amen? Mm -hmm. You see a family that has a little need? You know, bake them a few cookies and take them because you know they're a little bit down. Nothing wrong with that. Be, do good once in a while. Let them know you're praying for them. Then that'll cheer them up. So let's do good, all right? Give, give the Lord your time. Our time is always for us, trying to, uh, trying to please the boss, trying to please this person, trying to please. What about pleasing God? What about pleasing the Lord? Amen. Say, what does God want in my life? Is God uh, satisfied with what I'm doing here? All right, now let's go to the next one real quickly. So one was okay, I got a little bit of time. All right, what about giving God our talent? All right, now watch carefully. Give God your talent. Now, I'm not going to go through this one. It's a long scripture. But you know the scripture in Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Jesus spoke about the man. He gave one talent, you know, two talents and five talents. And when he came back, the guy with the one talent said, well, I'm not as talented, so I'll go ahead and, and bury my talent. By the way, talent is money. He said, well, I'll just bury it, and when he comes back, I'll just give him what he gave me. He said, no, I wanted you to double that. Amen? Now, I want to give you a couple of thoughts here. Uh, you, you and I might not be the most talented human beings there is in the world, but we got something God can use. Amen? Amen. I mean, <clears throat> some of you can decorate, like Sister Janet did all of it, okay? Some of you know how to decorate. She didn't like my decorations. I don't know why. But anyways, uh, <laughs> you Maybe we had too, too, big, too much, I don't know. But uh, me and Robert were hurt deeply. But anyways, uh, maybe you got it. Yeah, but she has a hand for decorating, okay? Yeah. Decorate, amen? 
Do it for the Lord. Do it because you know it's going to look better. You do it because uh, people are going to be glorified. The Lord's going to be glorified when people walk in. Uh, just kind of like your house. Why, why do you clean up your house when someone's coming over? You even clean places you haven't seen in years. Why do you do that? You clean the closet. They're not going in your closet, but you clean the closet. Why do you do all that? Because somebody's coming over. Well, we do that in the Lord's house because people, we invite people to come. Amen? So we mow, we do what, whatever talent we might have, we try to use it, we try to use it for the Lord. And by the way, God is going to give, we're going to have to give God an account for what we could have done and we didn't do. Uh, actually, let me see if I got the right scripture. Let's go to Romans uh, chapter 11. Let's see if I got the right scripture. I wrote down a scripture. <clears throat> like I said, sometimes I, I know too much, I think. And so I write something down and I got the wrong one. So let me see here if I got it. I think, I, I think this one's right, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> Hope you're there. Verse 29. Verse 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God doesn't go back on the calling. Mm -hmm. God doesn't go back on his calling. If God gave you the ability to do something, do it. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me illustrate for you. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not a good uh, plumber. But I do as much plumbing around here as I can. Well, sometimes I get stuck. You should have fixed the heaters. This time I couldn't do it. I had to, I had to go get help. And he just said, turn it on. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so he, but he came out here and, and worked on the heater and got it going. All right, now, I'm not a, a great person to do a lot of work, but I do the best I can. You see what I'm saying? Do what you can for the Lord. Amen. Do whatever that you can for the Lord. It might be that, that you just come out here and spray the weeds. It might be you come out here and just uh, work on one of the restrooms because it was broke. Whatever it might be, you're, you're helping out. So someone says, hey, can you teach a Sunday school class? Yes, sir, I'll do the best I can. And you get in and you start teaching. Why are you doing that? You're doing the best you can. Amen? And people, all I'm saying is this. Give your talent to the Lord, whatever little you have. Someone says, well, Pastor, I can't sing. The Bible doesn't tell you anywhere that for you to be in the choir, you've got to be a great singer. Amen? Mm -hmm. It just tells you to sing. And for some of you that can't sing, it says make a joyful noise. Amen? And some of you do that real well. But just get up there and sing. Say what you got to do. And just get up there and do the best you can uh, when it comes to singing. Now, there's always going to be somebody to tell you how to do it, how to do it after you're done. Amen? You ever done something and someone says, well, now, you forgot this or you didn't do this. There's always going to be someone. But if you don't pay attention, you'll be happy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. One time me and Robert had done some painting somewhere or somewhere here. And uh, I won't tell you who it was. Someone says, came and said, you missed the spot. And Robert goes, the paint's in there and there's brushes. You can fix it if you want. Amen? Amen. You got time for that. You can fix it if you want. We already spent a day out here painting. You see a little problem, fix it. One time, you, you've heard me tell this, but I'll never forget it. When I was pastor in South Union, a guy was, was messing around with the side door. We had a side door on the side like this that led nowhere, really, just a little area there. And uh, he went over and he slammed the door and he ended up with the whole deal just on his hands. But you open the door and close it. Pastor, he threw in the front pew. Pastor, you need to fix that and took off. Well, you fix it. You broke it. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but uh, I just annoys you. People, let me say this to you. Uh, I might not be the greatest preacher, but I'm going to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. If God called me, if I feel the call, I'm going to give it the best shot I can. And don't misunderstand me. I'm not going to stand up there and just uh, do what, well, you know, I'm not a good preacher, so kind of put it up with no. I'm going to study hard, and I'm going to try the best I can. By the time I'm done, I'm going to give it a good shot. What I'm saying to you is simply this. Give God the best that you can. Whatever God wants from you, you got to give it to him, all right? Now, again... Let me, uh, let, let me use a couple of illustrations here. Uh, years ago, I was teaching, the, uh, Brother John said, Pat, I need a Sunday school teacher. I said, all right, for what? He goes, for the junior church. And we had a lot of kids because we brought about 30 in the bus, and plus some came with their parents, and we had a lot of kids. And I said, okay. I said, uh, I'll try it. And, and so I got to, to, to doing the class, and then I said, Brother, Brother John, I said, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Ronnie to help me because I can't do this by myself. It's just too many kids. She, he said, that's fine. I said, so she can just at least keep him quiet while I'm trying to teach. And uh, you guys, if you ever been to the puppet show we had here for the kids during COVID, 
Well, we, that's kind of what I did. I said, well, I don't know anything, but I, somebody had given me a little puppet, and that little puppet's name became Backslidden Billy. That was his name, Backslidden Billy. And I mean, he would be in church causing problems, and at the end of church, he got saved. It was pretty good, because I'd make him walk, not that I'm good at it, he'd walk, get on his knees, and put his hands up, and start crying, <laughs> what's the matter, Billy? I didn't be saved, I didn't want to go to hell, and all the kids were watching, and all. It, was, it was, I had a good time with it. And then I would teach the story of Jericho, let's say Jericho. I got a bunch of uh, shoe boxes, and I put them together, and uh, what I did, I, I, I glued them, I glued some of them, but some I didn't, I didn't glue. And I said, you kids got some problems in school, or maybe you got problems with your parents, but you're praying and you're hoping that God will take care of it. And then I, I said, uh, they can go down like the wall of Jericho, but when I hit it, some of the boxes didn't go down. They stayed there. I said, oh, you know what these are? These are sins in your heart that are not letting the wall come down. And I gave a lesson on the sins of the heart. You see what I'm saying? Just, I mean, I wasn't a, a talented guy, but I could try something. Amen? Uh, we, when we done the, 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 the Star Wars and the Car Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm not a talented star, but I did what I could. Amen? Now, for example, uh, with Star Wars, I didn't know how to make all that, how you drive, how you fly it, whatever. But Carlos could. Mm -hmm. And I called Carlos, and Carlos said, well, I can help. I said, well, here's what I need. I think I sent him a picture of some uh, email, uh, text him a picture. And he made that deal it looked real nice up here. Amen. It was Amen. Cool. And lights and everything. He really went all out. But anyway, when we were when we did the, the three Hebrew children, he made the statue that we were gonna we burnt later on. Remember we burnt the statue and uh, we're not supposed to worship those and all that. Remember that? All right, so we just uh, what what happened though is you used your talent. You might say, I can't teach a Sunday school lesson. But I can draw pictures for the teachers that are teaching it. I can draw some if they need me to do this. I can do, you know, you can do stuff like that. Use your talent. Amen. That God gave you. Whatever God gave you, man, you gotta learn, you gotta learn to use it. Learn to use your talent also. And move on to the other one. Now, this one, <clears throat> I don't think anybody here has a problem with this one because I think all of us pretty much know that it's best. Learn to tithe. Amen. Learn to tithe. Uh, give God your time, your talent. Uh, give God your give me your time, your talent, your trust, and then also give Him your tithe. But that is simply mean learn to support your church. Amen. A church doesn't survive on its own. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really doesn't. And uh, someone says, "Well, when I go to church, they talk about money." Well, uh, when you go to your, to your job and you're not producing money, somebody's going to talk to you. Amen? Amen. Somebody's going to come to you and say, hey, uh, this thing ain't working out. And when they have less money, you're going to be fired. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because businesses move on finances. Well, the church is not a business, but it does need finances. That's right. We, we want to give someone a Bible or we want to uh, get, uh, get uh, people baptized. We have to get a baptistry. We fix this in here. It costs us quite a bit, but we, we have to get it fixed and look a little nicer. All of that costs money. They didn't say, well, you know what? You're a church. We'll give you a break. They don't care if you're a church or not. Mm -hmm. They still charge you. What I'm saying to all of us is simply this. We need to learn to give. Now, I, I'm going to give you one scripture. That, well, one, one area where I'm going to give you some scriptures out of. But let's go to Malachi. Now, you know where the book of Matthew is? Malachi is a book before Matthew. It is the end of of the Old Testament. All right, the end of the Old Testament. Now, learn to give to the Lord, but that I mean this. A 10% simply means that you give 10% of your check to God. Now, you say, Pastor, does that work? I believe this with all my heart, people. When, when we were young and got saved, we learned to give. You know, God's been good to us. The Lord's been good to me in Veronica. We learned to tithe, and we just did now, you say, well, God bless me financially. Yes, mm -hmm. but you also got to use wisdom financially. Amen. You don't just spend the money because God gave it to you. Oh, God gave me a bunch. Let's go eat. That's the first thing we think of when we get a good check. Amen. <laughs> no, learn to put money away. Learn to save. Amen? Mm -hmm. You got to learn. If you don't do that, then you're going to be in trouble later on. But I want you to notice if you're in the third chapter here, and what I, what I want to go to, let me find it real quickly. I thought I knew where. All right, let's go to verse uh, 6. Verse 6. He says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. 
Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances. I have not and have not kept <clears throat> have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. And excuse me. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? He said, Well, a man, how can we come back to you, God? You say, Come back to me. How? How can we come back to you? He says, Will a man rob God? Notice how he said it. Are you going to rob me? Are you going to steal from me? Will a man rob God? Yet ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? He said, In your tithes and offerings. Then he says to them, You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole, even this whole nation. Bring you, uh, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, now wherewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I'll not have, if I will not open the window of heaven, excuse me, open the, the open you the window of heaven and pour out a blessing, that ye shall not have room enough to receive it. God says, I'm going to bless you when you when you give. Amen. I mean, you won't have to steal from God. You won't have to steal from anybody. God said, I'll just bless you. And that's true, people. Amen. I can show you people after people that God has blessed. Now, let me say this to you. When God does bless you, don't forget him. Amen. I've also seen people forget the Lord once they were sitting pretty. God began to do good things for them. Pretty soon, financially, they're not exactly broke. but They're not rich, should I say, but they're not broke. God's taking care of them. They got plenty to eat. They got they're doing great. And pretty soon they forget the Lord. Amen. Amen. See, when my tithe went from if you get ten a hundred dollars, you give ten to God, okay? When my tithe went from ten to twenty to thirty to forty, and one day I said, We're gonna give sixty dollars to the church. <laughs> Amen. That, by the way, that happens to everybody. I gotta give sixty dollars to the church for what I made. But God said, what you've got left over, I want to make it last longer. Amen. Longer than if you would have kept that. And it did work, by the way. Mm -hmm. The Lord did take care of us. I mean, we're raising six kids, and the Lord took care of us, took care of each and every one of them. Not a one of them lost weight except Paul, but not a one of them lost weight. <laughs> Amen. I mean, God was just providing and taking care of us. And then as the kids got older, they probably don't realize this, but God gave them jobs. Good jobs. Amen? So we didn't have to buy their clothes. We didn't have to do anything for them. They took care of everything. They bought their own cars. They did their own Why? God was taking care of them. Why? Because this all started with mom and dad decided we're going to do this. Amen? Now let me also say, uh, God, God will say, I'll pour out a blessing. It's not always financial. Sometimes it's your kids. Amen? Amen? You go, wow, God did this for me. Let me use an illustration uh, for some of you that go through this, and I don't want you to take it personal because I know a few that are going through this, so it's not just you, but let me say this to you. I remember one time a, a preacher said, uh, I went to go deal with a, a man, this wife, and this lady said to me, can you come talk to my husband? And he, he's getting worse and worse. Pastor, he's getting to where I, I can't even come to church hardly. Now, she was faithful. She didn't miss. She goes, but... Every time I get ready to leave, he starts cussing me. He starts uh, just calling me all kinds of names. It's getting rough, Pastor. When you go talk to him, Pastor said, sure, I'll go talk to him. He said, when I got there, the man was sitting across from me, and I began to talk to him. He said he had this mug of beer in his hand. I had my New Testament open, sitting across from him, uh, close to him. He said, when I finished, I said, well, what do you think of what I just shared with you? He said, you really want me to tell you what I think of what you, what you shared with me? He said, yeah. He goes, here's what I think of it. He said, all that foam of that beer, all over my suit in my New Testament. He said, you would say, Lord, Pastor, ain't that rough? No, Jesus went through more than that. Amen. Paul went through more than that to win someone to Christ. They got beat. Amen. He said, I got up and I just thought, man, he's getting worse. She said, I told her, don't, be, don't give up on praying for him. You keep praying for him. No matter what, you pray for that man that he'll get saved. He said, one day, they both walked in. They come to the altar. He said, um, they, and, and, and my altar worker went to go speak to them. And the guy looked at him and said, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to him. Pointed at the pastor. And the pastor goes, uh, he said, I went to the piano press. I said, I don't care what happens. You keep playing that piano. Doesn't matter what's happening. You keep that piano going. So he walked down. And the guy said, uh, 
did you come to get saved? He said, no. He was a loud mouth, beady-eyed little guy. He was a gambler. He said, no. He said, that's what I was afraid of. He said, what, what can I help you with? I come to tell you I already got saved. I want to know when I can get baptized. <laughs> he said, when did you get saved? He said, he began to cry. This guy that was hard-nosed began to cry. Pastor he said, last night, he said, I woke up. I reached over and my wife wasn't there. And I began to cry and I said, I began to call her. I said, honey, what, where are you? What's the matter with you? Are you sick? Where are you? He said, I got out of bed for some reason a fear came over me. He said, I ran, he said, I ran looking for her. And I said, I heard her in the restroom, but she was talking. I thought, well, we don't have a phone in there. By the way, there were no cell phones there. Okay. <laughs> we don't have a phone in there. Who's she talking to? He said, I opened the door and my wife was had the, the lids down. She was knelt by the restroom, by the toilet, and she was praying and she was saying, Lord, save my husband, even if it takes my life. You save that man. He needs to be saved. He said, I got on my knees. I said, honey, if you'll tell me how to do it, I'll get saved. Amen. And he got saved. He said, Pastor, it's okay if I got saved at the commode. But, and then, he, goes, <laughs> he goes, well, that's the best commode testimony I ever heard. Amen. Amen. The truth is, let me just share this with you. We've got to learn when we give to God, God's looking at us. That's right. And he's going to send some blessings. And our blessings are going to come because if you understand, one of the greatest things that we, that we have as, as people it is finances. Two things destroy a marriage. Unfaithfulness. And finances. You know, a lot of marriages have broke up over money. Mm -hmm. right. Over money. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. I would hope that your wife or your husband is worth more than dollars and cents. Amen. I would. Have, I would hope that. Let's do our best. What are you going to give the Lord this year? Maybe a little talent. Your tithe. Maybe you're going to give me your trust. I'm going to trust you more, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself in your hands. I'm just going to trust you. And whatever happens, happens. But I'm just going to trust you. We've got to learn to do that. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you in prayer, our Father, we do ask, Lord, that you be with us, that you speak to our hearts. And Father, we ask today, Lord, that you'll just be with us during the morning service.